Lesson 13.3, Multiplication and Division, Inequalities with Positive Numbers. In sixth grade, you're going to be multiplying and dividing to figure out what x is um, with just positive numbers when it's an inequality. When you were um, doing just solving equations, equations, not inequalities, but when you were doing equations, you had positive and you had negative numbers. So when you're multiplying and dividing, you had to remember the Dorito. Well, with inequalities, it's a little bit different. So as a sixth grader, you're just going to be working with positive numbers. And that's a good thing because it gets very confusing when you put in negative numbers. So learn this now. And if you haven't done the previous lessons for solving equations with multiplication and division, then you're really going to struggle with this because it's going to be confusing for you. That is why I've been telling you, do not skip any lessons. Just go in order. Go on the checklist. Do an activity. Check it off and then move on to the next one. Don't be skipping around. I don't care if it makes sense to you to skip around. Don't do it. Okay, for 13.3. Um, we're going to we're going to read a problem and then make up an inequality to go with it. So here's your title for um, here's your title right here. Get that written down. A lot of you are not putting titles on your notes. Please do that so that when I say okay, where's thirteen point three, you'll know right where it is. Hey, I'm reading this story right here. Dominique <clears throat> is buying school supplies. He buys three binders and spends more than $9. How much did he spend on each binder? So, <clears throat> excuse me, in your notes, you're going to write A, and then it says he spent more than $9. So let's just start with that. Make some space. And then more than is greater than $9. Okay? Now, in the past, we learned that you could also say greater than or equal to. That's when they would say he spent at least $9. He spent $9. That would be the least he could have spent more. But that's not what this problem is saying. This problem is saying he spent more than $9. So there's no way it could have been equal to $9. Okay, now how many binders did he buy? He bought three. And how much does each one cost? We don't know. We don't know, but we know that when we take it times three, it's going to be more than nine. We're going to use, um, let's see, they tell us here let x represent the cost of one binder. So we're going to put an x here. Okay, 3x is going to end up being greater than 9. If you take out the x and put a 3, that would mean 3 times 3, which is equal to 9. So you need to understand that x will end up being more than 3. Let's solve this now. 3x is greater than Nine. Remember, whenever you're trying to figure out what the variable is, you do the opposite operation of what's there. This is multiplication, so we are going to divide. Divide by three. Divide by three. Show this in your notes. Show how you divide each side by three. This cancels out so that all you're left with on this side is x. x is greater than, and now divide this. Nine divided by three is 3. So that's our solution. x is greater than 3. Then they're going to want us to graph it. So if we're going to graph x, which is greater than 3, we draw the open circle. That means it starts at 3, but it can't be 3. It's going to be like $3.01 or something. It can't be equal to 3. So when it's not equal, like that, if it looked like that, we would color it in. But it doesn't look like that. So we're not going to include 3. So we draw a circle to show that. Okay, and then all the numbers greater than 3 go this way. And that's how you would draw that. So 
So here's a little tidbit of information right here. Just read it with me. You don't need to write it down. You can multiply both sides of an inequality by the same positive number, and the inequality will remain true. You can divide both sides of an inequality by the same positive number, and the inequality will remain true. What do they mean by both sides? In equations, you separate the sides with an equal sign. With inequalities, you separate the sides, the left side and the right side, with the inequality sign, less than, um, this is a greater than, remember you can make a G, that's greater than or equal to, this is less than or equal to, and this is less than. All right, so let's look at example one. Get example one in your notes. This says 12x is less than 24. Okay, so 12x, write it down in your notes, is less than 24. And the way you solve it, since this means 12 times a number, we're going to do the opposite, which is divide. Divide by the coefficient. Okay, whatever you divided by on the left side of the inequality, you're going to divide by on the right side of the inequality. And then these cancel out, the 12s cancel out, so that you're left with x. x is less than, and then 24 divided by 12 is 2. Now, it says x is less than 2. Let's look at the graph right here. Does it include 2? Could it be equal to 2? No. This is just a less than sign. It's not the sign right here, less than or equal to. So you have the open circle, and then all the numbers that are less than 2 would go this direction. Okay, let's look at B. Write it down. Y divided by 3 is greater than or equal to 5. Okay, now this is a division problem. Remember, we want to get y by itself. So the number, the coefficient that's with y is a 3. And they're saying divide it by 3. Do the opposite to undo that, to get rid of the 3. So it would be times 3 times 3 over here. Notice I'm using a multiplication dot. Now these two numbers cancel out like cross-canceling. That's why they had you practice that when we were multiplying and dividing fractions. And then you're left with y is greater than or equal to, multiply that, 5 times 3 is 15. So when you graph it, you're talking about numbers, all the numbers that are greater than or equal to 15. Let's look at the graph that they did. Notice this time they, let me change colors, that they colored in, it's a colored in circle. Before, it was an open circle, like that. Uh, that's an open circle, they call this a closed circle. Use a closed circle to show that 15 is a solution. If you took out 15 and put Y, that is still true. So you color it in, okay? Go ahead and write number 3 in your notes. 5x is greater than or equal to 100. This means 5 times some number that we don't know. Since it's multiplication, we're going to do the opposite, divide. So show that you're going to divide by 5 on both sides. They cancel out. The 5s cancel each other out so that you're left with x. So it says x is greater than or equal to, and then 100 divided by 5 is 20. So go find 20. Now your first decision is, is it an open circle or is it a closed circle? Because it could include, it could be equal to 20, this line right here tells me that, I would color that in. A colored in, a closed circle. And then the numbers that are greater than 20 are the ones that go this direction. Let's look at number 4. A number divided by 4 is less than 11. So a number divided by 4, I'm going to multiply because that's the opposite. Multiply times 4. Times 4 to keep it balanced. And then cancel those 4's out, they cancel each other out, Z 
is less than 11. No, scratch that. I made a mistake. You need to multiply 11 times 4 is 44. <laughs> okay, so now, are you going to have a closed circle or an open circle? Z is less than 44. Well, can 44 be less than 44? No. In that case, you would have an open circle, and then all the numbers that are less than 44 are going to be this direction.